Hello, Samadan here. Now, it's been a while since I've done these videos, it's been uh, about three weeks, and so I'm going to go through and do the Wellhead blog in the second half of this video. But first, I'm going to talk through all the things I've been doing gold making just to catch up on where we are at the moment. I'm kind of in this almost lull period where I'm just reposting my auctions, making the most of my sales, restocking as when I have time, and just ticking things through as well as dabbling a little bit in classic and things like that. I'll probably do a separate video on the whole classic progress, see how I'm getting on there. But for now, let's have a look how we're doing on retail. We are currently sitting at one and a half million. I haven't collected my mail since a couple of days ago and haven't posted over the weekend. So I probably ought to go do that first and then we'll have a look. Okay, really nice mailbox here. We've got a legendary sale of a Grimveld hood, 56,000. Shadow Lace Cloak, probably one of the Crafters Mark of the First ones there, 20,000. A few bits of food and a few items and a couple of things here and there. So that's, uh, that's a pretty good mailbox. I'll take that. And you might be wondering why I'm hanging around in Stormwind. I'm doing the daily quests here to get the recipes for the Epicureans Awards. This is nothing more than just purely recipe collection. I have a goal that I would like to get myself a little bit higher on the rankings in terms of where I'm at in collecting recipes. If we look here on data for Azeroth, when I um, put in all my characters, and this is account-wide, so this includes all of my characters. If I go down to recipes here, I've got 57.5%. Um, I'm currently number 30 on Shadow Song, 37 on the Connected Realms, 1,500 on EU. So this is a target of me, this is a perfect thing to do during downtime whilst we're in this kind of lull period as I'm collecting up recipes, seeing what I can do. So one of those things for me at the moment is just to collect up the Epicureans awards so that I can uh, pick up all of the uh, recipes here. Now I do believe we also have time walking coming up, which is on the 25th of May. So if I get some tokens then I can trade those in for the small bags, I think it's small spice bag or something like that, and they will have Epicurean awards in them as well so that's going to be a good time to uh, finish up some of these recipes and just try and collect everything if I can. So that's kind of like a secondary thing we're doing at the moment but first and foremost at the moment at this stage we're just really just sort of uh, listing auctions doing whatever dailies each character needs to do and and relist and repeat. Probably worth going back and doing my mission tables as well because those uh, are a nice bit of gold but obviously that means teleporting around and things like that. So at the moment I'm just doing these dailies. This is a nice easy one just getting some pumpkins so we can just fly over and collect those up literally as simple as that and then come and hand those back in so that gives him one epicurean award for that and then i could use my uh, loop of the kirin tool to teleport to old dalaran go and do that one and then that'll give me probably another two epicurean awards and then i repeat this you know every day and then i'll eventually get all the ones i needed i did this a, a long time ago to get my chef's hat um, which needed a hundred Epicurean awards, which is invaluable if you're going to be doing any sort of cooking. But uh, it's a nice little fun thing to do, uh, especially this time of the expansion. There's always something to do as a gold maker. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just jump through my other characters and collect up their gold on their mailboxes, and then we'll see what our final tally is for the moment. Okay, Bridget, my jewel crafter and engineer, doing well here. Flipping some excess ghost iron ore I had, and another legendary sale here, Shadowgast Ring. Those are sold really nicely, 68,000. That's pretty much most of the mailbox here. A few other bits and pieces that are ticking through, which are nice, consistent sales. So I, I'm, again, really happy with this. So leatherworking is ticking through nicely. We have the occasional crafted dreadful gear. Uh, we get a few sales of those every now and again to restock once in a while, and then the pallid bones. Occasionally, I'll get the odd legendary sale but I haven't got the full set of legendaries here I'm waiting for 9.25 before I finish up that so we'll add that to the coffers and a similar situation with El Morty my blacksmith here a couple of little, little bit of items don't tend to get a huge amount but the occasional ones come through makes it all worthwhile so another 12,000 there okay not a huge amount on Stapadan my scribe we've started getting into the glyph market on some of the old world glyphs and I've collected up a fair few of them now already this is going to be an ongoing progress again with this recipe collection seeing what I can do in terms of gaining in my diversity in my recipes and that gives me more opportunities to make sales. I've got a feeling a lot of the legion hard to get glyphs are going to be the ones where I can make some more money there but I'll carry on relisting what I have and learning through any new recipes I can find. What I have done is taken alchemy and dropped herbalism
Christ. And so the eventual aim is to have both alchemy and inscription on this character. We're still not level 60 yet. We're still 53. So probably another thing to be doing in the spare time is to level up whilst I'm here and see what I can do in terms of just getting myself up to max level and then maxing out the professions as they are. Alchemy still has quite a few gaps, a lot in the unlearned tab here, obviously, and the same with inscription. There's a lot to do here on Legion inscription, Draenor inscription, and Cataclysm inscription. Start at the bottom and did Northrend Outland. Those are all done, so I'm going to work my way back up and collect up these, level up the professions, make sure I've got everything, and try and just chip away at this list, really. You can see here we're only at 29% of inscription. So there's a long way to go in that recipe collection goal, but, but it's fun to do. I love professions and all the different things you can do with them. It's a shame a lot of these things are only really for collection purposes, but still it's nice to be able to complete them. Now Hellfire has been doing a little bit of flipping of her existing stock. She's got loads and loads of cloth and a few other bits and pieces and herbs that I picked up at a cheap price. So I've started selling that off just to see if I can make a little bit of extra cash and recoup some capital. You can see here it's paid off. Got a little bit extra here on the Wheel of Bloom. Heavy Desert Leather and Rising Glory. So another 52,000 here. So I'll keep just uh, posting some of this on or using it up depending on profession and see if I can get some gold coming in that way. The eventual aim really at this point is just to keep on collecting enough gold to pay for my two accounts now because I have two um, that's mainly for my classic adventures at the moment but I will be looking to collect up enough tokens to be able to uh, buy one of those large bundles of character transfers and then I'm going to split my characters that I have on one account over onto two so that I can have both accounts open and both listing auctions at the same time just to increase my time efficiency and then eventually once I've done all of that maybe I'll keep them in separate places or maybe I'll just combine them back together again at a later date when I only want one account but for now I think depending on how it pans out with Dragonflight as well I might continue with two accounts gives me more flexibility that way. It does mean, of course, I have to afford two tokens each month, which currently at 283,000 means I need to make like just under 600,000 a month in gold. Now, I'm not sure whether I hit that target this month. Let's go have a look. So we are at 1.751 million here at the moment. That's quite a nice big rise, actually, looking at that jump up there in our graph. Now, we did buy a couple of tokens at this point. That was at the beginning of May. So we were at 1.8 million there. So looking, this is over the last month. So we are only early in May here at this point. So let's just take from here. This is our current progress let's look at that so where are we at middle of may roughly at the moment so are we on target we were at 1.4 million we're now at 1.7 thanks to that really nice mailbox we had here you can see things are just ticking through here with the restocks and the odd sales so nothing huge but that was, was a really good mailbox what we just had there over the weekend sales seven so that is four five six seven so that is about three hundred and forty thousand that's about three so that's three hundred and sixty two thousand in profit as we've got down here uh, in real terms it's probably about three hundred and forty thousand in terms of where we're at here once we take restocks into account so halfway we're definitely on target i would say uh, for the month so we need to make another token another couple of hundred thousand and will be enough to pay for our, our month's gold making and then some and then hopefully that will um, and that will start working towards giving us some more tokens as well so I'm, I'm really pleased with where we're at at the moment and this is just maintenance really I'm spending very little time actually playing the game at this point I'm literally just logging on listing my auctions as and when I have a convenient moment usually on a second screen and then occasionally I might get the odd half hour here or there to do a little bit of a restock or something like that so so for, for from a maintenance point of view it keeps me going there's lots of fun things to do lots of little mini goals i've got at the moment collecting recipes and uh, expanding my empire into gold making and profession so all in all really happy with that okay so let's talk about the wowhead economy blog for this week so it's been like i said earlier it's a bit of a lull week in terms of things just ticking through with many people and so we're waiting for the next bit of news to come through with Dragonflight. We did have a few updates from the community page which I'll go through here and then we'll talk about upcoming things possibly with Classic and um, things you can currently do with your gold making at the moment with the Crafters Mark here. So again this thread that's um, on the community page uh, we talked about it last week there's a link to that there and this week Drow has been giving some very detailed information and clarification on to various bits of the professions as people have been asking. So this was 
particularly interesting, like the huge focus on group content worries you. This is from Mirasol. And I am in a slightly similar boat in that I don't really have a lot of time to play. And usually when I do like to play, I want to dip in and out at my own pace. Maybe something happens and I need to leave the desk for a while. and I can't really do that whilst I'm in the dungeon. So for me, professions and gold making is a great way where I can just do a little bit at my own time and then progress forward towards these longer goals. So with that in mind, um, the question here is, um, will it be possible to um, carry on developing your crafting without having to be forced to do group content? And this is obviously, um, Drow's going through this in and can, you can see the balance between the two because thematically, only getting recipes in dungeons and raids and things like that, I can see how it makes sense. Um, from a story point of view, you have to go to the dangerous places to get these recipes. And from a gamer point of view, I can I can see the appeal. And for me, sometimes, you know, that is really nice. I like the fact that I had to do battlegrounds to get my marks of honour. Um, but then I could also do comp stomp. So there were alternatives there. Uh, I love the way the Legion quest line worked as well. But that was more of a single player point of view. You, but I did have to do LFR raids to try and collect up some of those elusive rank 3 recipes. So overall I think it can work um, but forcing players to go down that route is a difficult balance and you can see here that they are very much aware of that and so uh, they recognize that there's there's two different things here. Um, the one thing that was very, very interesting here was um, the vast majority of recipes will continue to be acquirable through outside play as well. Um, it is possible some will recover from dungeons or raids um, because they are great thematically and things like that. That said, uh, they are currently thinking that perhaps many, if not all of these recipes, will not be sold bound. So you can ask someone to go into instance and get them for you or buy them off the auction house. So that's a great way of appealing to both markets. You can go out and get it yourself if you've got the time or inclination or you can buy it off the auction house if you can save up enough money for it so i think that's that's a good solution i'll be happy to see something like that being implemented although to go back on myself it does take the fun out if you can just buy all your recipes quite easily off the auction house so i think a bit of both a few quest lines um would be really nice from my point of view something you can chip away at over time so it's great that they're really thinking about these kind of things now there were a few other snippets and um bits and pieces in the thread that i've just picked out here as a little list of things so going through they haven't talked much about gathering yet they will be adding a little bit of depth to the gathering but they're not making them secondary say you could do that as as part of your regular play without having to use up a profession slot for it and there's also no current plans to make learned recipes account wide um, they're definitely aware that inventory space is an issue and looking into what they can do there i mean the reagent bank if that could be really expanded into different material types and categorized by different expansions and having the same capacity for each type and each expansion uh, i think it was kune that did a mock-up of this um, a while back and it looked really good so i would love to see something like that being implemented or even something that can be shared across the account that would be fantastic because at the moment having to have guild storage for all of this is is nice but again it's still limited and i've got myself in a situation now where i've got a guild per character practically uh, there was discussion about whether work orders are going to be applied to older recipes, which I can see would be really, really useful in the future, especially where we've got stuff like the gear we've got at the moment, or you've got the gear which we're doing for the Mage Tower, that someone could specifically say, I want these stats and these optional reagents of my gear at this eye level. That would be great if it starts to get incorporated, but currently they're so busy with everything with Dragonfly, they're just focusing on that, so we're, we're unlikely to see anything of the old content uh, coming into this work orders at this point. It's nice to see here philosophically uh, they like how the optional reagents give lots of different ways to customize crafted gear and i think that ties in really well with the work order system so you can specify certain things it's a little bit clunky with the auction house at the moment where you can't actually see in the listing without hovering over each of the items what specific stats or extra like progenitor enhancements something has so it's nice to see that all this customization and especially the stuff with the progenitor enhancements where it's not necessarily just stats but a little something like like the speed boost that you get or a certain effect um, is really nice to see and that gives a lot of variety so it's nice to see that they are on the same level of that and they are um, they're trying to make it work certainly 
At the moment, they're talking about are they going to expand the number of professions uh, learned by a single player? It's currently limited to two, and currently they have no plans to expand that further at the moment. Um, maybe they'll they'll come into that later, though they did say that we'll look into it. And then this was in relation to using Dark Moon Fair for skill points and um, other things like that. Um, updating the Dark Moon Fair quest could go very well with the over, overall update in terms of like going out in the world and collecting different things. So there may be some extra things you could do in terms of getting skill points through doing old content or going to far distant places in, in the current or different expansions. So I could, I could see a lot of flavour there in being able to get more depth into the professions. So there's a whole bunch of nice little snippets here that it's really, really reassuring to see so much attention being paid to uh, professions, which is integral to so much of our goal making that uh, I'm very, very much looking forward to Dragonflight with all of this stuff that we're talking about. So keep an eye on this community page. I'm sure there's going to be lots, lots more to come. But uh, that's it from the current plans for Dragonflight. In terms of what we're doing in Shadowlands right now, uh, Lazy Goldmaker and uh, Penguin have both got videos this week talking about how to make the most out of crafters marks and where to get the profit margins. Lazy Goldmaker goes into a lot of depth about the crafters mark first ones, the unique gear that is very specific to people who want maybe catch up on certain slots that they haven't got filled yet. And so the focus here is actually to uh, use missives as well, uh, which is quite interesting. I haven't really used those myself. So what Lazy Goldmaker is doing here is focusing on the top stat combinations for the 262 armor. A little bit of combat going on behind me here. So uh, Lazy Goldmaker has been uh, focusing on the 262 gear and has fantastic success with this. And um, profit margin is really good here, 2,000 to 40,000 gold on a high population RAM. Because TSM can't handle crafting operations with missives, he's doing a lot of this manually. I personally are adding in the progenitor enhancements as well. And then if you watch the video or go onto this post, where's the post? Uh, here, this link here. This will take you to Lazy Goldmaker's actual post uh, about it. And the thing to look here is what Lazy Goldmaker talks about here is the extra specific missives, haste mastery, plate, uh, verse crit for mail, leather verse crit. So there's a lot of different things here that um, Lazy Goldmaker is focusing on with the missives to try and get the best stat combinations. So really recommend giving that video a watch and seeing how he goes through and makes the most of those crafters mark of the first ones. Now it's not all just the 262 gear, the catch up gear and the novice crafters mark gear also has a niche for players at various levels. I personally add in the pure air sail extensions to all of my gear that I'm crafting including novice crafters marks gear so that people have speed sets available to them and can race through the levels on the route from 50 to 60 and then once they get to 60 there's a another set of speed set gear that they can put on straight away so there's a there's a niche for everyone there and uh, penguin has a great video here going through and talking about all the sort of the novice crafter smart gear that still sells and how you can make decent profit with those and talks about the whole crafter smart system in general so this is currently at this point of the game a really solid way of making gold right now it doesn't really require a huge investment of time unless you're going to go all the way into the sort of 262 gear and getting the reputation for that you can just start off with a novice crafter smart gear and go from there so current gold making this would be my definite recommendation so that's current retail gold making stories here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about classic here. Now that phase five of um, Burning Crusade has been released and Wrath of Lich King is hurtling towards us, I'm sure beta will come up very soon. Uh, no Hitch Rome has asked in the threads here, uh, what's best for gold making in classic? And so they've gone through a list of all the different things they're currently thinking of um, with the fact that um, inflation is high and everyone is going through somewhere plateau at the moment and it's a difficult raid. So using a lot of consumer therefore herbalism mining for the materials flipping items i'm um, using tsm alchemy obviously with potion mastery should be good profit um, as people are constantly buying consumables for the raid and mana potions and all those sort of things i think that would be pretty solid the same with food and there's a few niche ones here uh kibler's bits and fisherman's feast as suggestions from a um from a classic um point of view and then there was a couple of suggestions by other people mobile shrine bear um pretty much saying that gathering because of uh, the bot and the sheer number 
of people trying to gather. Um, they don't they don't actually rate it that highly as a source of making gold per hour, but uh, a decent gear um, protection paladin farming old level 65 man content um, is going to be pretty uh, well off. And I've seen a video of people going through and doing things, scholomance and things, places like that, and getting a decent amount of gold. So that's something I'm going to aspire to once I've got my characters up to uh, level 70. And, and a flip side to this, herbalism and mining will always bring regular steady income um, because people will uh, will want to level up professions and have to go through all the different ores and all the different herbs and leveling professions, especially with inscription when it comes out in Wrath of the Lich King. People are still going to have to level up to 300 in the uh, in the classic sense. So I, I I agree with this one. I think herbalism and mining is going to be pretty solid for a decent um, for a decent amount of gold coming in. Obviously, it all depends on how much time you have to bear and things like that. And enchanting as well is good for just the materials. Once Wrath comes out and we have Vellums we can attach to enchants, I think that's going to really kick off as well. So there's a lot of interesting niches coming out. I'm really looking forward to uh, the way Classic is shaping up. I'm definitely going to be getting into Wrath of the Lich King once it comes out, doing a little bit of preparation on that at the moment. I'll, like I said earlier, I'll do a separate video on my Classic journey and see how that goes. But that's it for the uh, the Wowhead blog this week. I hope you enjoyed that. There's a bit of something for everyone in there, and I hope you've been enjoying the game in whichever form you play it in uh, there's always something to do as a gold maker whatever goals you might have whether you're collecting recipes uh, finding out what farms to do or you're just new to gold making and you don't know where to start and you're just finding your feet so i hope that was useful good luck in your journeys wherever they may be and until next time happy gold making and i'll see you very soon